For those of you who may not know me, my name is Nancy Walters. I'm the Executive Director of the La Jolla Community Center, and I'm extremely happy to have you join us. We're very excited to have Andrew be um, a speaker here today and to offer this wonderful course, which many are calling life-changing. So hopefully you learn a lot and are interested enough to take the um, course that is going to be starting next week. Um, again, many have called it life-changing, and I will tell you a little bit more about Andrew um, in just one minute. Um, before we, we get to the introduction, um, again, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in this program or any others that we offer, which is a plethora of, of um, programs, including um, daily classes like yoga, Zumba, um, not Zumba, not yet, um, <laughs> yoga, meditation, art, um, music appreciation. We have wonderful events coming up like a virtual wine tasting. We have our speaker series that has continued again virtually. Uh, we also have an upcoming opera concert, which will be airing in August. So hopefully you're able to join us. And if you're interested uh, for those programs, um, please visit ljcommunitycenter.org so you can see all of our offerings there. So without further ado, I will um, introduce Andrew briefly. Um, so he is called the most oldest man in America. Mellon is a professional organizer, speaker, coach, speaker and coach featured in O, the Oprah Magazine, Martha Stewart Living, and the New York Times. He has worked with numerous Fortune 500 companies and nonprofits and has helped more than 100,000 people get and stay organized. He is the author of Unstuff Your Life, Kick the Clutter Habit, and Completely Organize Your Life for Good, and The Most Organized Man in America's Guide to Moving. So please help me welcome Andrew Mellon. Oh, thanks. Hey, everybody. We'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll virtually clap. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much, Nancy, for having me, and I'm delighted to see all of you with us today. And we're just going to jump right in. And uh, just to reiterate what Nancy had said earlier, please, if you have questions that come up, uh, feel free to just throw them in the chat window with a hashtag, you know, a number sign and a letter Q. And that way, Nancy can easily find them when we get to the Q&A section. There'll also be time for you to ask your own questions live. But if something comes up while I'm teaching, feel free to, to just throw it in the chat window. All right, all right, let's just jump right in. The first thing I'm gonna ask uh, you to do is to, um, is, am I on the right slide? This is not supposed to be the agenda. We're gonna breathe together <laughs> is what we're gonna do. We're gonna just take three deep breaths and ground ourselves into, um, into the room together, the virtual room together. And uh, you probably don't know me uh, well, you, you don't, might not know me at all. I'm not a particularly woo-woo kind of person, but, and I do have a meditation practice, and I find that just by breathing together three simple breaths, we all suddenly enter the same space together, and it becomes much easier to focus and concentrate, which also reminds me this would be an awesome time before we take our breaths for you to silence your mobile phone or anything that might beep or chirp at you for the next 30 minutes so that you're not distracted and I'm not distracted as well, all right? So I'm gonna just shake it out a little bit. We're gonna take those three breaths and uh, climb right in. And I'm gonna breathe, count of five in, hold for one, five out. And try to, you, put, you can put your hand on your belly if you want uh, so that you know where you're breathing into. And this will, uh, this is an amazing grounding exercise. I share this with my clients and people I teach all the time. Because if you're having a day where you're getting a little uh, squirrely or it's hard to concentrate, you're feeling agitated, literally three breaths will reset your central nervous system. It's a, it's a remarkable tool. It's factory installed. As, as long as you're alive, you're breathing. So you have access to this tool. You don't need to pay for it. And it's right there. So uh, again, just it's a plug for breathing and we're going to do it together now. So... I don't know about you, but I feel a little more grounded and I feel like we're all together now. The next thing I'm going to do, and it really, it feels like I'm, you know, we're in an ashram, but we're not. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to just set your intention for the next 30 minutes. If you have a clear agenda, and this applies not only for this micro experience of us in this training presentation, but also for any task that you're about to do, clearing the kitchen counter, loading the dishwasher, as preposterous as it may sound to you, if it's, if it's 
foreign or unfamiliar. If you just set an intention for, I want to do this and I want to do it in 15 minutes. I want to do this and I don't want to yell and scream at anybody. I want to do this and I don't want to beat up on myself while I'm doing it. Whatever the intention is, if you set it and you have a bit of focus going into whatever the task is, my experience over 24 plus years of doing this work, and as Nancy said, working with well over 100,000 people, the clearer your intention, the more likely you're actually going to get out of the experience what you put into it. So just, I'm going to give you 15 seconds on the clock just to think about what do you want to take away from the next 30 minutes? And if you say, well, I want to learn more about organizing, or I want to find out if Andrew is somebody that I want to take a five-week class with, I, I feel confident that you're going to get those things. So if you can drill down a little bit deeper, I think you're going to get a bigger prize at the end of the experience. All right? Now that was a literal 15 seconds. So this is also a, a, a micro teachable moment. If that made your skin crawl, if you were thinking, oh my God, Andrew, will you just start talking? I don't wanna sit still for 15 seconds. And then you've got a story that says, oh, I don't have enough time. I can't start that project because I don't have enough time. You just experienced that in 15, minute, 15 seconds, you could get agitated and, and <laughs> a little upset. So it's amazing the stories we tell ourselves and certainly over the five weeks that we're going to spend together and even over the 30 minutes that we're going to spend together, you'll see how powerful story is. And I'll explain more about that as we get a little deeper into the presentation. But when it comes to stuff, when it comes to getting organized and staying organized, story, if you are not consciously, mindfully making choices up here, story is running back here in your lizard brain, and it is making all of your choices for you, even if you think you are making them. Your lizard brain is actually making them, and chances are they're making either a flight or fight reaction to something. It's not, a, it's not the choice you would be making if you were thoughtful up here in the front of your brain. All right, we're gonna do a little show and tell now. I just want you to see in, in my professional experience what some projects have looked like that I have done. And it'll also, depending on what you're looking at in your home, it'll either make you feel like you're in good company or you're way better off than some of the people that I've worked with professionally. So this is an apartment in Manhattan. I can't hear you, but I would hope that you are gasping right now. And I hope that nobody has this in their home. But even if you do, I want you to understand that I've dealt with this before, so I have not only the skill, but also the patience, the compassion, and the clarity to be able to address a situation like this. So this was a client's apartment in Manhattan. This is another client's apartment in Manhattan. And this was a private residence in Washington, DC. This is somebody's office, you know. So no judgments, there's a zero judgment space. So. You, other than feeling like, oh my God, thank God that's not my office, I, I'm, I've got less to deal with than I thought I did, right? This was a garage for a client in uh, uh, Atlantic City, and this, is a, this was the closet after we had, uh, the, the garage after we had finished with it. This was an office in uh, Newton, Massachusetts. Now, I want to draw your attention right up here to the upper right-hand corner to this cat wallpaper um, that is peeking through this wall, right? So this is the room cat wallpaper. This is the after picture. Suddenly there's a lot more cat wallpaper. The paper just, it, it amused me to no end. It, it just, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a curious choice. Anyway, this is what it looked like when we had finished. So again, before, after. And then this was actually my home in Pennsylvania. I had a country house in Pennsylvania for eight years and, um, the foundation of the house needed to be replaced. So I moved everything uh, upstairs, including some construction materials. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looked like after. So um, as you can see, there's, uh, there's lots of room before, before, and after, right? I mean, that middle space, there, that's where all the work happens, but this is what you can end up with. And as I said, you know, not to toot my own horn, I've been doing this work for a long time. I've yet to meet anybody that I wasn't able to help if they wanted to change their relationship with stuff. So now I'm going to share some, some statistics with you, some facts and figures. The first one I'm going to share with you is that 80% of the paper and information that we keep, 
we will never use again. And remember I mentioned story? This is where story might be cropping up for you. You could be thinking, oh, Andrew, you don't know me. I'm an amazing researcher and the information in the paper that I'm holding on to is definitely gonna come in handy someday. Not exactly sure when, but I am the exception to your rule. And this is what I wanna tell you with all the love in my heart, I've been doing this work for a very long time. I have yet to meet the exception to my rule. So chances are you are exceptional in any number of ways, but you are not when it comes to the piles of paper that are sitting on your uh, dining room table or on the floor next to your bed. In fact, if you would just chat in the window, who here has a pile of things laying around their home right now? In the garage, in the trunk of your car, in your basement, in a closet. Just let's see in the chat window or you can raise your hand and let's just see how many people uh, are, are the rule and not the exception. That would be great. Or you can just type in the chat window. Excellent, all right. Now I'm gonna share another uh, piece of information with you. The average person is interrupted by communications technology every 10 minutes. And on average, it takes 23 minutes to recover from one of those interruptions. So this is very easy math to do. Two interruptions, two recoveries, and that's potentially an entire hour that has been lost for you. If you get to the end of your day and you think, God, I was crazy busy today. I got nothing done. It's likely you are constantly being interrupted. You did your best to recover, but you had nothing to show for it. And then you're going to tell yourself, oh, well, maybe tomorrow will be will be different, but you don't have a plan to make it different. You just have a, a hope that it will be different. So one of the things that we're going to work on over the five weeks is, is uh, the seven deadly time thieves come into what we're talking about, which is interruptions, overcommitting or people pleasing, multitasking, poor planning, emails, meetings, and procrastination. All of those seven deadly time thieves factor into how we are uh, addressing stuff and time because they are, they are uh, linked when it comes to getting and staying organized. This is my favorite statistic. The average adult tells 200 lies a day. Let's just let that sink in for a second. Just cracks me up. Now, to be clear, probably two thirds of them will never be spoken out loud. You will just tell them to yourself, but a good third of them will come out of your mouth. And it could be something as simple as, Hey, Nancy, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Now, if you were really sorry to interrupt Nancy, you wouldn't be interrupting her, right? But you want what you want more than you want to uh, not get what you want. And we've been trained to lie about it so that we can either manipulate somebody else's feelings or feel better about the choices that we're making. It'd be much better to just say, hey, Nancy, I know you're working on something and this is really important to me, so I'd like to interrupt you. Same, you get the same result, but one of them isn't pretending that your behavior doesn't have consequences on other people around you. So you'll start to recognize where you are fibbing, bending the truth, either to make yourself feel better or to try to make somebody else feel better to minimize the impact. It's just, it's a remarkable statistic. This last one is that the average person will waste one year of their life looking for lost or misplaced items. And let's be clear, nobody is going to spend an entire year looking for their mobile phone or even their key fob. I call this nickel and diming ourselves out of a year of our life because it's five minutes here, it's 10 minutes there, and we'll tell ourselves one of our 200 lies, oh, I'm gonna make up that lost time, but this is the thing about time is that once you've spent it, you can't get it back. So you can, uh, you can bank money, you can't bank time. If you say, I'm gonna get up extra early tomorrow morning, it's three o'clock for everybody in your time zone, not 2.30 for you and three o'clock for everybody else. So we think we are, uh, we, we can ma manipulate time in that way, but the truth is we can't. And really, I don't want anybody to get to the end of this experience and think, oh my God, I want a do-over. If you would have told me this is when my life was gonna end and this was how it was gonna end and all this crap was still gonna be piled up around me, I would make different choices. So I don't want that to be anybody's experience. I want you to be able to really live a free and unencumbered life doing what you wanna do when you wanna do it and not lose another minute looking for your key or your mobile phone your wallet, your bag, anything that you need. You should be able to find that within 30 seconds or less. So now we're gonna talk about mindset a little bit because underlying all of the behavior that 
that I hope to encourage you to, to change over the five weeks that we're together is really how you're thinking about stuff. Because if you have a closed mind and you are insisting that you know best, even though you know your best efforts yielded whatever it was that needs to be addressed, you're going to be fighting, not me, I, I, look, I, I can take it, but you're going to be fighting the information and the process, and that's just going to make you miserable. The, the process can take it too, but I really want you to get to the other side and get the freedom that I'm, I'm, I, can, I feel confident promising you because, again, I've been doing it for a long time. So what I want to share with you is that everyone is born organized. Nobody came into this world with a bag of clutter, right? We've accumulated it all. So this idea that somehow you're broken or you're missing the organization gene, there is no organization gene. They've mapped the genome. There is no organizational gene. So now you could be easily distracted. You might have ADHD or some other challenges around staying focused. But when it comes literally to being able to know where your things are and put them back in their homes, that's not something that anybody is born incapable of doing. So that's one of your 200 lies. If you tell people, well, you know, I just don't have the organizing gene, you need to either um, just acknowledge it to yourself, right? I'm, you don't have to say to somebody, I'm lying right now, but you should know for yourself that it is in fact not uh, true. <laughs> so as I said, freedom is what that's the cash and prizes that I'm talking about here. Now, I mean, you might find a $400 printer in your garage that you're about, that's about, the window to return it is about to expire and you'll get some cash or you might sell some stuff at auction and get some money. But the cash and prizes that I'm talking about really aren't cash and prizes. It is your life back. And I won't settle for anything less than that, right? I mean, anything less than that is a booby prize. When you are finished with this process of getting and staying organized, you should have free time to do whatever you want, whenever you want it. That's my promise to you. Now, if this sounds great, but you are the burnt matchstick and you are thinking, oh yeah, but Andrew, this is why it won't work for me. I'm gonna tell you again, you might be exceptional in any number of ways. And I've worked with Nobel Peace Prize winners. I've worked with, you know, world renowned astrophysicists and uh, members of presidential cabinets and stay at home moms and dads. So I've worked with all different kinds of people. I've yet to meet the exception. So again, if you've got a story running here that is gonna check you out and tell you that this is gonna work for everybody else, but somehow you're broken, I'm gonna tell you that it's just one of your 200 lies and this will work for you too. Winners do what they have to do. Everyone else does what they want to do. So if you want to be a winner, you're going to need to do what you have to do. And we've all had this experience before in our lives where push came to shove and you did have to do something regardless of how you felt about it. What I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to putting your keys back in their home or putting your phone back in its home or changing your behavior, it's completely within your ability and it's really just about your mindset and your willingness are you willing to change your behavior or do you want what you want without expending any energy and that's just a experience for you to sort out I, I i can certainly support you as your teacher and coach and facilitator but ultimately it's a question for you if you want exceptional results you'll have to put in exceptional effort and you will get those exceptional results the actual definition of abundance is too much stuff. So even though you might be feeling put upon by the amount of things that you have around you, what I have found to be true, and as I said before, I'm not a particularly woo-woo person, a sense of gratitude that you have too much stuff is a key to unlocking your relationship with stuff and letting stuff go. So being able to say, thank you for being present in my life, I now release you, you will get much further down the path than if you are trying to wrestle stuff to the ground and beat the crap out of it. You're, going to, you're just going to do better if you, have a, if you have an open heart and you are willing to, uh, to say thank you rather than, why are you here? You're making me crazy. Doing battle, you're, you'll get tired before stuff does. Stuff is inanimate, so it will outlast you. All right? We'll talk about some fundamentals. 
The first one I'm gonna share with you is that clutter is nothing more than deferred decisions. So the piles that you have laying around you began just as an object. The first object that you set down was just an object. It was the second thing that you set down on top of it and said, you know what, this is a strategy. I'm gonna make a pile of all of the things that are have something in common, and then I will put them away later. Not now, of course, because I don't have enough time now, but later I will definitely do that. And of course, later never arrives. And you're just ending up with tons of piles of and stacks and things around you, bins, bags filled with things. Doesn't matter what it is. It's the behavior, which is the deferral of the decision of where does this go and putting it away in that moment. So this is something that we're going to work on over the five weeks that we are together is uh, undeferring those decisions, making the decisions, assigning things homes, putting them away, and, uh, and getting on with the rest of your life. Now, who here is old enough to remember Dragnet? You can raise your hand or throw it in the chat window. Um, let, me know, um, let me know how many of you folks are familiar with uh, the 1960s TV show Dragnet. And perhaps you'll remember our friend, uh, Joe Friday, the detective who would show up on people's doorsteps and say, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts, right? So for those of you who do not remember Joe Friday, perhaps you remember the 21st century version of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, either way, what we're trying to do is channel our inner detective. We are looking for the fact, not the story. Story is going to trip you up. The fact is going to help you solve the problem. So when I talk about story, these are the stories that are typically running in the background right here. Um, the first one is there isn't enough time. And I'm going to tell you there is enough time when you know what's important. And we'll talk about that a little bit in just a moment. I don't know where to start. Sometimes people say they're confused about where to start when they don't like their choices. I don't like this, I don't like that. If I wait long enough, one of them will just fall off because it'll expire and I'll be left with the other one. Then you can tell yourself one of your 200 lies. I always get the short end of the stick. <laughs> this always happens to me. I'm left with the dregs. Everybody else gets what they want. I'm left with garbage. The truth is you chose garbage because you, buy, you, d you didn't make a decision. So sometimes we're genuinely confused, but often we say we're confused when we're just telling one of our 200 lies. All right, the people around me are worse than I am. Let's be clear that uh, life is not a race to the bottom. So you don't get bonus points for pointing to your best friend, Betsy, and saying, well, you know, at least I don't, I, I, I'm not like Betsy. I'm not always 15 minutes late and the butt of everybody's jokes and I can never find my car keys. I mean, I'm, I'm not great, but, you know, I'm not her. Understand that uh, the lowest common denominator is not something to uh, strive to achieve. We want you to be better than Betsy. All right. It is important that we know what is at our core, our core values, because those are the things that are going to pull us through these sticky moments. I want, I'd love to know from you in the, um, in the chat window, how many of you have heard of Viktor Frankl and read his book, Man's Search for Meaning? You can just chat that in the chat window. And if you haven't, or even if you have, uh, Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor, and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning, which was the book that he actually intended to publish before he was put in a concentration camp. So he had to recreate the book. He lost the manuscript. He had to recreate the book from scratch uh, on the other side of uh, liberation. And uh, what he, one of the things he describes in the book is that he discovered while he was in the concentration camp that... Uh, People who disconnected from their core values had a rapid decline, regardless of how physically healthy they might have been. Whereas people, even if they were quite frail, if they remained true to what mattered to them, they had a much greater survival rate. And it was, a, it was obviously remarkable to him, and I find it remarkable as well, that, that uh, our ability to identify what is worth living for and what is worth dying for uh, is one of the things that we wanna tap into because if you're trying to make a choice about, should I just leave this on the kitchen counter and keep walking or should I put it away? Now, of course it's not life or death like being, you know, being in a concentration camp, but all of those little micro decisions add up to the quality of your life. So I want you to be making choices that are in alignment with your values, not based on your momentary comfort. 
there is enough time for what's important. And this, uh, this example of Dorothy uh, is, I think, so telling to us. I'm, I'm guessing everybody has seen this movie. You know, it, 20 minutes into the movie, the house falls on the witch. Uh, Glinda shows up, says, grab the red shoes, put them on your feet, don't take them off for anything, and then Glinda leaves. Glinda doesn't show up until three minutes before the movie's over and says, oh, you want to get back to Kansas? Click your heels three times. You got the shoes. Those will take you back to Kansas like that, right? So, I mean, we would not have the amazing movie, The Wizard of Oz, if Glinda had just told her 20 minutes into the movie, put those shoes on your feet, and if you want to go home, at any point, you can just click your heels and none of this will matter. You don't have to deal with the flying monkeys or the, you know, the fireballs or the poppies or any of it. You can just go right home. Point being, all of us have the ruby slippers on our feet. We know what is important to us and we have made critical decisions based on what's important to us. We just need to be channeling that in non-critical moments. And it's, uh, it's a skill that I will teach you over the five weeks that we're together. Now, Different kind of value is monetary value, right? And we place monetary value on stuff. And sometimes that's the source of one of our stories, right? I would get rid of this, but I have to get X amount of dollars for it, or I might as well keep it. Understand value is not guaranteed. It takes two people for something to have value. You as the person who has it and the other person who's willing to give you what you think it's worth. Otherwise you have an object and a story. Now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't have a calendar with a some day on it and neither do you. If you are scheduling things for someday, you might as well just say never because someday is never going to happen. Every task has a beginning and an end. That's what makes it a task. I'm sharing with you an example of the clean laundry. If you think the end of the laundry is a clean basket of clothes on your bedroom floor, I'm here to tell you that is not the end of doing the laundry. The end of doing the laundry is when your clothes have been put away, the basket's empty and it's back on top of the dryer, ready for more clean clothes. Now, if you get to the end of your day and you think, oh my gosh, I was crazy busy today, and I didn't finish a single thing that I started, it's likely that metaphorically, you did not put the laundry away. You got so far into a task and then you stopped and said, oh, I have to go do this. I'll come back and do the laundry later. But of course that doesn't happen. And then you just end up fishing things out of the, the basket until you tell yourself, well, at this point, why bother putting it away? I'm just, I, I'm, I'm down to the last three pairs of socks and underwear. I'll just, the next time I do the laundry, I'll be sure to put it away, one of your 200 lies. Now, if you would please join me in doing this, this is the organizational triangle and I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me, although we're not gonna unmute you to do it. So just repeat after me if you would. One home for everything, like with like, something in, something out. We're gonna do it one more time. One home for everything, like with like, something in, something out. That's the organizational triangle. That's all you need to know to get and stay organized. Three rules, I made it up. It's trademark technology. One home for everything means everything has one home, only one home, not open to debate. Where you keep your keys can be different from where I keep my keys, but your keys have a home, my keys have a home. That's how we can find them in 30 seconds or less. Like with like means all like objects live together, not most of them, but all of them. So all of the tools live in the toolbox, not most of the tools, but this is an example I used on this television yesterday. You don't keep the screwdriver in the junk drawer in the kitchen because you've got a story about needing to use the screwdriver and not wanting to go all the way out to the garage to get the screwdriver. All like objects live together and Everything has one home. This will cure 90% 90 per, 90 of your disorganization. The third leg of the triangle, something in, something out, is how we stay organized. Once everything has a home and all of the siblings are together, it's very easy to maintain organization. It just means that when something comes in, you must be ready to let something go. So you have a 4,000 square foot house. You got a 1,000 square foot walk-in closet. You have 150 pairs of shoes. I'm not gonna tell you that's too many pairs of shoes. As long as they all have a home, you can have 150 pairs of shoes. What I am gonna tell you is if you decide that 150 pairs of shoes is enough pairs of shoes, when you buy the 151st pair, it must be because you're ready to retire one because there's no reason to be buying things and consuming things if you have enough things to keep you busy and occupied. You don't need to accumulate more. That's how you get uh, unorganized and have to go back to the beginning and start all over again, which, the curious thing is that most people have gotten organized before. It's the staying organized that we're gonna focus on over the five weeks that we're together. 
When everything is precious, nothing is precious. So I'm going to share another story with you. When I was working with a private client on Staten Island, we came across uh, two silver objects in her grandmother's house. We were cleaning out her grandmother's house. Uh, one was a sterling silver tea set. The other was a ball of aluminum foil because her grandmother had lived through the Great Depression. Now, uh, if we would have stopped right there, we could have said, oh, two silver objects, they both belong to grandma, we'll keep them both. Now, clearly they are not equivalent. So the ball of aluminum foil ended up in the recycle bin. The sterling silver tea set, we sold at auction for $22,000. So clearly, uh, not everything is precious and not everything is trash. We need to be able to distinguish. Now I'm gonna give you a quick preview of what's coming in the five week class. This is what we're gonna cover uh, when we're together over the next five weeks here at the La Jolla Community Center. We're gonna deal with papers and filing. How many people here have papers and filing making them crazy? I saw Barbara already posted in the Zoom room, in the, in the chat room, right? So we're gonna cover papers and filing. We're gonna, that, great, Laura. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna look at your kitchen and your pantry. We're gonna talk about clothes and closets. We're gonna deal with other storage spaces. We're gonna talk about and uh, deal with sentimental objects. Anybody got anything uh, kind of sticky that they're really attached to, even if they don't like it, they feel guilty about letting it go? We're gonna talk about all of that, including some estate planning. All of this is gonna happen over five weeks and we're live just like this every week. And we're gonna record the session. So if you can't make it, you can watch the session, you, don't, you, you didn't miss it if you couldn't be there live for one of the weeks. Of course, I, I would prefer it for you to be there live every week, but of course things come up and so you'll still be able to access the course materials uh, once you've signed up for them because everything will be recorded. And you'll remember this is where you got to here. So this is where you can go to sign up for the class. And it's again, it's just ljcommunitycenter.org forward slash calendar. And you'll see the links, whether you're a member of the center. And I, I certainly hope you are members of the center. If you're not, you should look into membership. It's uh, very reasonably priced and there's great benefits of being a member. So that's my plug for membership. And, uh, you know, if you have friends that want to take the class, they don't have to live in La Jolla. They could be anywhere in the country. They can t take the class with you and they can sign up as a guest, or maybe you'll convince them to become members of the center as well. So you can sign up and uh, I encourage you to do that. And uh, I decided that I'm going to give you a bonus when you sign up. I mean, not literally when you sign up, but in the very first class, I'm going to teach you the perfect recipe for passwords. So uh, anybody here struggle to remember your passwords for your online profiles and things? I'm going to give you the perfect recipe so you will never forget a password again and they will be super uh, protected and encrypted so nobody will be able to hack them because if you're using password or you're using your last name with a one two three at the end of it uh, somebody's going to figure that out pretty quickly. All right and with that I want to open up the floor for questions. If you have any questions, uh, now is the time to ask them. I would love to hear from you and uh, answer your questions. Thank you, Andrew. I'm, I did not see any questions in the chat box. So if anybody has any, please feel free to um, unmute yourselves and, and we can um, take a few questions. Andrew's willing to stick around for a bit. so. Any questions from anyone? Yeah, yeah I have. I have a All right. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm John Humphrey. I don't. I don't have my video up, but um, so um, my wife and I are in our 70s, and uh, we have the large house that turned into a warehouse at some point, and um, we need to start moving things out. Um, so would, would your class be appropriate for that kind of, um, the, the Norwegians call it death cleaning, but my yes, wife- Yes, they do, right. We, we, don't, we don't need to project that far into like, we don't need to prepare. I mean, we can prepare for death with a long, like a long runway. Right, yeah, okay. So <laughs> we're just getting on the plane. <laughs> you're, 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 not, you're not even, you're like in the boarding zone. You're not okay, like- Okay, that's good, right, right. secure. You bought the ticket. You're in the, you're in the waiting room waiting for them to call the, you know, call there the- There you go. That's more positive. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, look, I mean, in five weeks, 
If you have a big house and you know it's a warehouse, are you gonna finish everything in five weeks? Probably not, unless you are doing nothing except eating, sleeping, and organizing in those five weeks. But uh -huh. definitely you will learn what you need to learn from me so that you can continue working beyond the class, most definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, great. yeah. Thank you. Andrew, yeah. there's a question on um, from the group chat, and it's Renee Walter. She says, "How long will each session be?" So if you can seven talk. hours. No, it's uh, they're hour, they're an, it's an hour long session. <laughs> I'm never gonna let you go. We're just gonna we're gonna start in the morning and we're gonna go all day. It's this Plus, every session is an hour. <laughs> Andrew, I think you also assign maybe um, some group work outside of the hour long session. So oh, most definitely, I mean, you'll have homework that you'll work on, which is self de self defined. I mean, I will give you tasks, and you can choose how many of them. So you know, for um, for our death cleaners, they might choose to pick a few more things, uh, and some of you might choose to take fewer uh, tasks on. You'll also get uh, an accountability buddy. Uh, oh. during the program. So you'll have somebody throughout the week that you can stay in touch with. We also, um, we're, are we going to create a private band group for everybody so that they can chat and use that? Yeah, Barbara shaking her head, yes. So uh, there's a platform called Band. Don't worry about it if you don't know about it. Don't, you know, don't go into your stories about Band. I'm just sharing with you, if you don't like to be on Facebook, we have an alternative so that we, we create a private group in Band where you can chat with each other throughout the week. You can share before and after pictures. You can ask questions. I monitor the, the Band group. Uh, and so I will be uh, in and out of the group throughout the week and I can answer questions there. Uh, so you don't have to wait until the next time that we're together. It's a very supportive experience. You're not in a vacuum of your own thinking between the hour that we're together on one Tuesday and the next hour. And you're, you know, you're running around the house thinking like, I don't know what to do. What, what did he say? You know, you can watch the videos again. You can talk to your accountability buddy and you can also post things in band. And that's how we will stay in touch over the week. So think of it as it can be be as immersive five, a, a five week period as you want it to be. I certainly encourage you to participate as vigorously as you have the bandwidth to do it, no pun intended. Uh, because the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. So if you're, if you're eager to, um, if you're eager to, to you know, turn a corner and get something done, I will be right there to support you every step of the way. Um, Andrew, do you help pair down emails as well? Uh, we will talk about your digital life, uh, and I have some tips for managing email. It, it, isn't, uh, it isn't its own module. Uh, we only have five weeks, so uh, we, we will touch on it, both when we're talking about papers and filing and... Um, and the storage spaces. Uh, and I have other I have handouts and other tools that I can share with you around email management, certainly. Uh, Ruth asks, do I address the psychological issues around holding onto stuff with sentimental value only? Most definitely, Ruth. That's, I mean, when I talked about sentimental objects and I also talked about story, it's, it's all psychology. It's, I mean, you know, I'm not a clinical psychologist, but as I said, I've been doing this work for a long time and I've worked with people who, um, who bring a lot of story to their process. So, yes, yeah. please, Lana. Um, as we're talk you're talking, I'm thinking of like five or six people that I wish had been watching this. Can I, is there some way I could have them tune back into this half an hour? So we are recording it and it will be put up on the registration page. So most definitely they can come and watch it. You can watch it again. If you are like, what did he say? What do you say about that accountability, buddy? I want to see that again. You can come back and watch the video over and over again. It'll be up there until the class goes live next week. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What else you got for me? Will the DVDs, um, the recordings, will those be on DVDs so that we can, you know, watch those when we need to or want to? Uh, well, no, they won't be on DVDs because that would, I mean, and I'm not being facetious, but that would mean we would have to literally make a disc for you and give it to you, okay. which we're not going to do. It, it will be posted to a website where you can go and watch them at, you know, three o'clock in the morning if you're having a difficult time sleeping, or you can, and you can watch them over and over again as often as you want. The classes, once they're recorded, they'll be available to you whenever you need them throughout the class. And do, will you have afternoon classes as well or only in the morning? 
I believe that we're scheduled for, what is it? It's 10 to 11 uh, on Tuesdays. Nancy, you can answer that question. Yeah, 10 to 11. Um, this is the first time that we're putting this class together. If we um, have feedback that a different hour works for you, we might, um, if Andrew's available, may uh, be able to do a different hour. But for now, it's 10 to 11 for five Tuesdays in a row. Okay. What else you got? <laughs> If that's, if that's all the questions we have, again, like Andrew said, um, we will make this available for, for um, people to watch. I know I, I received some messages from some people who either weren't able to access or just um, couldn't um, um, attend today. So we'll make sure to post this on our website um, within the hour and we'll make it available. So please um, tell your friends about this class. Like Andrew said, they can join you and you could be buddies throughout the course and um, they don't have to be in La Jolla. They could be anywhere in the, in the country. They could be anywhere yeah. in the world actually, if they log in. So, and actually, you know, Barbara, um, I mean, Barbara is uh, taking a class with me. So, I mean, she can talk to, you know, Barbara, why don't you tell people just a little bit like what, bef what it was before Andrew BA and uh, <laughs> AA. <laughs> And you well, can keep bringing I, I still have, that I still kind have of AA. quite a bit of paper, but um, I needed, uh, I had hired a lot of organizers, but I didn't really have a system. What I was looking for was the system to go through each room. And uh, so I signed up for the full 10 week course and I've made great progress in my house and actually great progress with my papers too. I still have more work to do, but um, so for me, I needed a, um, a system. I needed a weekly meeting on each room so that I could then focus on that room and I would make little progress on each room so that then I could go back and make greater progress on each room because I knew what to do. Uh, and I loved my accountability buddy who I found in San Francisco who were still connecting. I'm still sending him photos of you know my little credenza that I've cleaned out and books that are in boxes and things like that. And I find that I didn't realize how much the accountability buddy uh, was important for me. I needed someone to, to be accountable to and to set weekly goals with. Excellent. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, and understand that the, uh, the end result is that I think he's great. I loved his course and uh, I, I'm so glad he's with us. Can I say? Thanks. Can I ask Thank you a question? Yeah, please, Faye. Um, that stack of books next to you makes me nervous because I have stacks like that all over the place. Why should you have a stack like that? Uh, that's a bookcase, Faye. That is a that's a design within reach. It's a th those are the only books that I have in my home. Are, is that wow? Stack? The only one. And, um, it's it's actually <laughs> not a stack. It's actually a bookcase. There are shelves in here, so there's only ever like this many books in a clump. <laughs> so it's not like I have to, you know, it's not hard to get a book out of the bookcase. I mean, that's so my that philosophy. Really I like to have mind. everything visible that I need, so that makes a big mess. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's a story. That's perhaps one of your 200 lies. We'll find out, um, <laughs> you know, because you probably don't need to have everything in front of you. You probably just need to have what you need in front of you when you need it. So <laughs> you'll get a chance to look at that. Uh, back to what Barbara was saying, just I want to be clear, like if the, I, I, some people really dig the idea of an accountability buddy. Other people are like, oh no, I don't want to, like, I don't want to have to be accountable to anybody. You don't have to use one if you don't want to, but I will tell you, um, an external source of accountability triples your success rate and speed. So it, again, if you've got a little story or some resistance, like, well, I, you know, I'm my own person and I don't need to be accountable to anybody. I'll be my own accountability buddy. Remember, whatever's going on around you, you created that being accountable to yourself. So uh, you got nothing to lose by, by availing yourself of... Uh, buddying up with somebody to support them and and get some support and some coaching during the during the sessions it's just it's we've had tremendous success and i have an accountability buddy i mean i am you know the most organized man in america now my buddy is not uh i'm not talking to her about organizing a closet i'm talking to her about my business you know <clears throat> We talk a couple of times a week and we coach each other around any issues that we have around the business and what I need to do and making sure that I do things because there are things that I don't want to do. You know, I don't like making sales calls. I love teaching. I don't want to talk to people about whether they should take my class or not. I would much rather somebody else do that. 
So I need some, you know, I need support and coaching around that to make sure that I do it. Because I know that once I talk to somebody, it's much easier for them to go, oh yeah, no, this makes total sense. I totally want to sign, sign up. So yes, Barbara. I just want to say one more thing about question as well. Okay. Well, one more quick comment. And that was, I was very shy about the accountability buddy in the beginning because, you know, there were a couple areas that I didn't want to take a picture of, but then I realized when I looked at band, there was stuff worse than what I had. And my accountability buddy had the, you know, openness to kind of accept where I was. So it was, I had to work through a little bit of reticence there, but then I kind of broke through that. So I just wanted to mention that. Cool. Lana, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if it's beneficial to have an accountability buddy that's not a friend or relative, because I can think of friends and relatives that would be great, you know, good buddies, but is there, is that detrimental? Should, should it be someone you don't know? Oh, I mean, it can be somebody inside the program or it can be somebody, I mean, you can be somebody outside the program as long as they're not going to let you off the hook, right? I mean, you can't pick the person who's always going to say, oh, no, 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 yeah, you had a rough day, dear. You, you don't have to do your homework today. Well, that's no, no, no. what I was wondering. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, that's not an accountability, buddy. That's an, that's an enabler. Okay. So we don't want you to pick any of those people. We want you somebody who's going to go, Lana, really, come on. It's 10 minutes, go put your keys back in their home and you know, load the dishwasher and then call me back. That's what we want from an accountability buddy. Not somebody's, oh yeah, no, no, no. You had a rough day. Why don't you, you start tomorrow morning. Andrew would understand. <laughs> Andrew would understand and Andrew would tell you, go put your keys in their home and load the dishwasher. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Please. I, uh, this is Ruth, can you hear me? I can hear you swell. Yeah, uh, can I sign up today for the course? And uh, I'd like to do that. Um, and I wonder if uh, there are some other people that are planning on signing up. It might be nice to know um, how many people we have that are here right now that are planning on attending. You can most definitely sign up right now. I mean, I think that the, the, the sign up page is live and you could go there and sign up right now. And I, you know, I love the idea of the, like a little challenge, a little internal challenge, like how many people are going to sign up? You want me to leave the room? You guys can talk amongst yourselves. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I have a question. Can you give an example of a homework assignment? Like do you uh, use a timer or tell us to use a timer? I most definitely tell you to use a timer. The timer is essential. If you don't uh, quantify how long you're working, then you're working for narrative goals, which are preposterous. They mean nothing. If you say, I'm going to work on this until I'm finished, who knows what finished means? But if you say, I'm going to work on this for 45 minutes, everybody knows what 45 minutes is because you set an egg timer and 45 minutes later, the, the timer dings and you know, oh, look, I did that for 45 minutes. I didn't think I was going to last 15, but I actually made it all 45. So one of the, one of the main things that we do is shift you away from narrative goals and into math-based goals. Failure breeds failure, success breeds success. The last time you tried to clean the garage, nine hours later, you're covered in filth and the garage doesn't look any better to you. The next time you walk into the garage, you're already feeling beaten up. But if instead you say, I'm gonna go in the garage for 45 minutes, whatever I get done, I get done. And you go out there, you set the timer for 45 minutes, something happened and that builds momentum. So the next time you go in the garage, you're feeling like, oh, look, last time I, I, I did 45 minutes, let me see if I can do an hour this time. And it starts to build on itself. So, uh, and back to your question, Sarah, I mean, an example of homework is um, clearing off all of the counters, like all of the surfaces in your home to, to gather up, uh, yeah, you don't have to get rid of everything, but if you have piles of clutter, you will gather those up and put them someplace where you can start to process them. Yeah, that might be an example of homework. And if that freaks you out, Sarah, you can do <laughs> a counter. You don't have to do them all. But okay. I'm going to give you the, you know, remember we've got people who are death cleaning here, right? So I'm going to give you the biggest piece of homework. You can chunk it up however it works for you. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at your home right now. It doesn't look that cluttered. I mean, I, this might be the only place in your home that actually doesn't have anything. You know, you have two pieces of artwork and a nice floor lamp. It, does, it looks that's, relatively tidy. That's because a friend came in last year. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So don't freak out. I mean, you can, it is self-paced in the sense that I am going to teach you what you need to do and what you need to know, and you will do it as you do it. 
my goal is that you will do as much of it as rigorously as you can while you have access to me in those five weeks. So it, it's not a procrastinator's game that we're going to be playing. And I understand you all have lives. So you also, I'm not expecting you to transform your life in just five weeks, but I'm going to give you the building blocks and the tools so that you can do it. And remember also, as I said, staying, getting organized and staying organized. The goal is to get you to the point where this is not how you have to spend your time, right? I mean, so Sarah, you can think about that, right? It can take you a year or it can take you three months. You get to decide how quickly do you want to get to the rest of your life or how long do you want to just keep moving crap from room to room, trying to make a decision about what you're going to do. The goal is once you have the system to, to apply it consistently, because again, what I want for you is staying organized. Getting organized is easy. Staying organized is where the challenge is. Okay. All Thank right. You. Nancy's asking, uh, uh, oh, uh, Nancy, uh, um, uh, um, do I live local? Could you hire me personally? Um, uh, I do not live local to La Jolla. Um, I am, uh, I am in uh, St. Pete, Florida right now. I mean, I'm based in New York. I have family in Orange County. I'm often in Southern California. Uh, so, I mean, it's easy enough to hire me when, you know, I can put a mask on and come into your, your home. Uh, but I, I'll tell you that I don't physically need to be in your home. I have many clients literally around the world that I work with just like this. As long as you have a mobile phone and you can show me what you're looking at, I can direct you and it's quite impactful. Even if you're thinking, oh, that would never work. I promise you, I, I have seen clients pick stuff up and drag it to the front door, drag it out to the garbage, you know, rearrange cl closets, cupboards. It, the medium of being online, the only, ch the only challenge uh, for, for us doing the work virtually is if, it, if you're trying to pick up something that you would need a second pair of hands for, and I'm not physically in the room, in which case we need to get a helper to move, you know, the credenza. But other than that, it's just as effective to be online as it is in person. But that's a long answer to the question. Sometimes I'm local, sometimes I'm not. Planes fly back and across the, the country. I can, all, I can get anywhere. I mean, I've, I've worked with clients in Asia. I've worked with clients in the UK, in, uh, in Africa, and, uh, uh, you know, in the United States. So uh, Renee asks, I'm already rather disciplined about organizing, but I need to move stuff out to where? Well, it depends on what kind of stuff it is, Renee. I mean, we'll figure that out together. Um, uh, that's, that can be part of our work together is to find, you know, be mindful of one of your 200 lies might be this has to go to the perfect home as opposed to the next home, right? The next home is not your home. The perfect home is a, is a fool's errand because you could spend the rest of your life like, who needs this toaster? Somebody needs the toaster. You don't. It needs to leave your home. It, we don't need to find the perfect home for the toaster. It needs to get in your car and go to Goodwill, you know, to some thrift store, to a shelter. Somebody needs the toaster. So it's one of the ways that we trip ourselves up, right? It's like, it ha I have to find the perfect place to put this. And if you have things that you're trying to sell, if, you, if you've got things of value and you want to put them up at auction, I can also help you with that, with those kinds of you know, th those kinds of things. You just, I just wrote a blog post about garage sales. Garage sales are not the way to make money. It's the great way to, to visit with your neighbors. If you want to chat with your neighbors and make 50 cents, have a garage sale. If you want to liquidate something and get some money, put it up at auction, give it to somebody who's going to sell it, resell it on eBay or Etsy for you. But, you know, don't sit in your garage with a pitcher of lemonade thinking, nobody goes to a garage sale looking to spend money. They don't bring their platinum card thinking, how much can I spend for a sofa? They're like, if you tell them $50, they will tell you, how about 35? Nobody says, oh yeah, no, no. I don't think, I think you're undercharging. I, can I give you more money for that item? So just be clear that garage sales are not the path to financial independence. <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned blog posts? Yes. Where would we find those? andrewmellon.com forward slash B-L-O-G. Thank you. Yep, and just, uh, it, it, I'm sure it's everywhere, but my last name is M-E-L-L-E-N, not O-N. I am not one of those melons. I am one of these. <laughs> so, although some of those melons are clients of mine. 
<laughs> so anything else I can ask, answer for you? Yeah, what about Please. delayed decisions? What about them? How do you deal with like, if I have an I don't know pile? Yeah, well, we'll drill down through that, Sarah. Yeah, you, okay. you're not gonna, you, yeah. We're gonna have a little, uh, com, a little reckoning moment. Uh, we're, we're done deferring <laughs> decisions. Clock is ticking. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, Andrew, I think that um, all this information was wonderful. Thank you so much for spending so much time with us. I know we had originally designated 30 minutes and we've gone to almost an hour, but thank you all for your questions. And thank Andrew, you. of course, for your time. We're very excited to, to start the course next week. So again, please, um, uh, if you are interested, sign up today. It's on our website. It's ljcommunitycenter.org um, slash calendar. That's where you'll, where you'll find the information. That's where we will put the um, link for today's video too. So please feel free to share that with your friends. And um, I think somebody just raised their hand. Was that Sarah? No, I was applauding. She was, she was, oh, uh, she was waving. Thank you. Yes, okay, so thank you all for joining us again. Hope to see you soon. And um, Andrew, thank you so much. My pleasure, thanks. Hope to see you all next week. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye everybody. Goodbye.